Number one is talking about a right cone. It gives us that it has a um, diameter of 10 units. And it's also giving us the volume is 100 pi cubic units. Then it's wanting us to find the length of the segment drawn from the apex to the edge of the circular base. So let's actually draw out a cone so that we can visualize this. So a cone has a circular base. The apex um, is the point that the cone sides go up to. And so what they're wanting us to find is this segment that goes from the apex to the side of the base. So they've given us a couple of things here. They've given us the radius, okay? And they've given us, well, they've given us the diameter so we can find the radius. And then they've given us the volume, which for the volume, we would need the height of the cone as well as the area of the base. So we're going to need this orange segment here, or this, this one coming from the top to the middle. So, um, and then once we know this one, then we'll be able to find this blue one with Pythagorean theorem. So we know that the radius um, is five centimeters since they gave us the diameter is 10. So we're going to go ahead and first solve for the height so that we can go in and do the um, Pythagorean theorem. So for a cone, the volume formula is area of the base times the height divided by three. They're giving us the volume is 100 pi. And then they're giving us the base um, radius. So the area of a circle is the radius squared times pi. And then we have times h divided by three. So first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by three so that I can get this three off the bottom. So then we're at 300 pi equals 25 pi times h. So now we'll be able to just divide by 25 pi and that's going to give us our height. So when we, the, those pi's are going to cancel. So then we'll do 300 divided by 25 and we'll get um, 12 equals our height. So now we know that this is 12. Then we'll be able to do Pythagorean theorem to figure out this length. And so we'll have x squared is equal to 12 squared plus 5 squared. So x squared is equal to 144 plus 25 which is 169, and then we will square root and get that x is equal to 13 units. Number two, we have a right pyramid um, with a square base, so there's our shape. It has side lengths of, um, 10. So the square base has side lengths that are 10 units each. Each segment connecting to the apex to the midpoint of the side of the base has a length of 13 units. What is the volume um, of the pyramid? So let's go ahead and draw out um, this pyramid. Okay, so let's get the square base here. And then um, going up to a point, we'll get all of these sides. And then um, this says that the segment connecting the apex to the midpoint of the side um, is 13. And actually, let me move this apex over a little bit more centered so that we can see this a little bit better. So then we'd also have a segment connecting to the middle here and then out to this side creating a right triangle. So we'd have this um, going straight down to the center. So we know that this one here is 13. We know that this side length here is 10. So this is gonna be five. And now we wanna know the volume of the pyramid. So we're gonna have to find this, which is the height first. 
So we'll do that with Pythagorean theorem, 13 squared equals x squared plus 5 squared. And maybe you remember from the previous example that this is going to have to be a 12. Okay, so this height is going to be a 12. You can certainly solve this as well. So 169 equals x squared plus 25. Subtract 25 from both sides and then square root. So now we get that the height of this pyramid is 12. So then we can go ahead and find the volume. So the volume is area of the base times the height divided by 3. Now remember that this base is a 10 by 10 square. So that's going to give us the area of the base by doing 10 times 10. The height is the 12 that we just found. And then divided by 3. So our volume is going to be 100 times 12 divided by 3 which gives us 400 um, units cubed. Number three, for each of the pairs of solids, determine if their volumes are the same or different. If the volumes are different, identify the solid with the greatest volume and explain your reasoning. So in this one, in this first one, we have a prism and a pyramid with the same height. The pyramid's base has three times the area of the prism's base. Okay, so if we just, and it's not telling us what type of prism, but let me just draw an example just to help us think about this. So if we had something like this, we know that the pyramid's base is three times bigger than this one. And when we calculate the volume of this, we do area of the base times the height divided by three. So if we have this divided by three, but then the area is three times bigger, then these are gonna have the same volume because making this base three times bigger will make the volume three times bigger than what it would need to be. And then we divide it by three, so we'll get the same. Um, a pyramid and a cylinder have the same base area. The cylinder's height is three times the pyramid. Okay, so if the bases have the same area, and then we've got this pyramid, and then the cylinder, and the cylinder's height is three times more than this one, okay, this um, is going to give us a bigger volume here. Because we're taking the volume that's already bigger, so this one is base times height divided by three, and this one is just base times height. So if they had the same dimensions, this one would be three times bigger, and now we made it even larger, okay? So the cylinder is gonna be bigger. Um, and then this last one, a cone and a cylinder have the same height, okay? So we've got a cone and we've got a cylinder, and they have the same height. The cone's radius is three times the length of the cylinder's radius. So R is going to be three times bigger than this one. Okay, so if this one would have, let's just change this and say this one's going to be 3R. Okay, and this one's just going to be R. So now when we look at this, this base area actually got nine times bigger because we dilated it by a scale factor of three. So then the area is going to be three times bigger or sorry, nine times bigger, okay? And so now we changed it by this one by a factor of nine. So when we look at the base of the cone, okay, we're gonna have three R squared times pi. And in this, um, in this one, okay, in this cylinder here, it's just gonna be R squared times pi. So this is gonna be nine R squared, or sorry, yeah, nine, r squared pi, and this one is just going to be r squared pi. Then we're going to multiply by the same height for the volume. It's going to be times by the same height, times by the same height. This one is a cone, so it's going to be divided by 3, so the volume is going to be 3 r squared pi h, and this one is just going to be r squared pi h. So this one ended up being bigger, okay? So the cone is bigger here. All 
All right, number four, a pyramid has a height of eight inches and a volume of 120 cubic inches. Determine two possible shapes with dimensions for the base. Okay, so remember that a pyramid's volume is area of the base times the height divided by three. So let's plug this in to figure out what base area we need. Okay, so 120 equals the base times eight divided by three. So I'm going to multiply both sides by three first. Okay, then we'll divide by eight. So then we get um, that the base area needs to be 45. Okay, so we need two different shapes. Okay, so I'm going to do, um, maybe I'll do a square. And then I'll do a rectangle. Um, and so if I do a rectangle, I just need to find two numbers that multiply to 45 for the lengths. So I'll do five and nine. Okay, so we could have a rectangular pyramid with a base of five and nine inches. For a square, the sides need to be the exact same length. So then I would square root this 45. So each side would be square root of 45 units long. And if I multiply those, I'll get an area of... 45. Number five, a toy company packages modeling clay in the shape of a rectangular prism with dimensions of six by one by one half. They want to change the shape of the rectangular pyramid that uses the same, to a rectangular pyramid that uses the same amount of clay. So first let's figure out the original volume, which is just going to be to multiply all of these dimensions together. So six times one for the base times one half for the height gives us a volume of three inches cubed. So here's how much volume we're going to use. But now we want to be in a rectangular pyramid. Okay, so now that's going to be equal to our base times our height divided by three. So I'll multiply by three. So now our base times our height needs to equal nine for this rectangular pyramid. So you can decide what you want. Um, so if we do a height of one, so if I say that I'm gonna keep the height one, then my base would be nine, and I could do a square base at three by three. So I could have a square pyramid with bases of three and three and a height of one if I wanted to. Okay, I could also do, um, if I wanted to do a height of two, or sorry, three. Okay, if I wanna do a height of three, then my base would need to be three. So then I could do a rectangular base that has dimensions of one by three, because then one by three would give us three. So I could do a rectangular pyramid with um, base measurements of one by three and a height of three. So there's two kind of different possibilities there. Number six, these three congruent square pyramids can be assembled into a cube with side lengths of two. What would the volume be? So remember, the volume for any cube is just a side cubed. So you don't even need to worry about what these look like because they're going to make a cube that has lengths of two. So two times two times two, the volume is going to be eight feet cubed. Number seven, a monster truck wheel has an area of 324 square inches, 324 pi square inches. A toy company wants to create a scaled copy of the monster truck that has a wheel area of nine pi square inches. What scale factor should they use? So we're comparing areas. So when we compare them, we're going to get a case squared back. So when we do new area over old area or original area, we're going to get k squared. So the new um, area is 9 pi, and the original was 324 pi. So those pi's will cancel out. And then if we simplify that fraction, um, 9 goes into 324 36 times. So this is going to be 1 over 36. And this is our k squared value. So then we'll square root both sides. And when we square it a fraction, we can square it top and bottom. So our K is going to equal 1 over 6.